Hello, ladies and gents. I am the Rev, and we are back with more Between the Stars. We just got done with a nasty battle here where Blaze, one of our subordinates, made some really stupid decisions. So now we're going to have a chat. So let's see. We got Situation Room, and then go back to work. So, Situation Room. You sit back and wait until the hatch opens and and Doggo enters along with both lieutenants. Captain Lieutenant Blaze and Lieutenant per uh, Polaris are here. You uh, thankfully nod your head and, and, and Doggo ex exits the room, leaving you alone. Polaris gets closer to talk to you, but you make him shush. Sit down. They look at each other and take a seat. You take a deep breath before talking. Lieutenant Jody Blaze, you disobeyed a direct order. Your lack of discipline has made us lose our target. Do you realize the seriousness of the matter, don't you? She won't look in the eye. <clears throat> it was never my intention, Captain. If I had known he'd run away, I would have never been so reckless. I thought it would be a good chance to take down Captain Quartz. Former Captain Quartz. You silence Polaris with a gesture. Your intentions are the least of my concern, Lieutenant. He's right, sir. I doubtfully accept any punishment you decide. I'm only asking you to leave my crew out of this. They were just following my orders. Having said this, Blade draws her gun and puts it on the table. We're beginning to get annoyed. So now every children of the sun is really concerned about their own men? You've been dealing with them for years, and it's the first time you've ever seen something like this. Plower stares at you with his eyes wide open, in complete silence. A while ago, he was accusing Blaze of letting Quartz run away on purpose, but the idea of public execution doesn't seem to please him. That would change nothing, Lieutenant. You grab, the gun, uh, you grab the Lieutenant's gun and give it back to her. Blaze looks up at you, still in shock, as you continue. I'm not going to execute one of my Lieutenants on my first mission in Unit 4. And yet, this can't go on. I need the two of you working together as a team. I don't know what's going on between you two, but you belong to the same unit. You don't have to be friends, just be elite soldiers. If you want to become captain someday, you'll have to rise to the occasion. Tell me about Quartz. It's pretty obvious there's something Morpha hasn't told me. You both seem to have a personal relation with Quartz. I need to know what this is all about. Blaze looks aside and remains silent. Puss replies. The three of us were raised by Commander Morphia Captain. Oh, so like he's like their foster pop. Interesting. We're not blood related. Our parents were different soldiers under Commander Morph's orders. After their deaths, when we were still newborns, Morph, Morpha took us in and raised us with his wife, Mira. Since then, we've been trained by the Commander to proudly serve in his unit, as our fathers did once. That's the least we can do for him. You must know how disappointing it's been for the commander to see Quartz and his men deserting. Yeah, that's a pretty big slap in the face. Quartz was the oldest of us, the most skilled, and of the three of us, the best to eventually replace Morph, Morpha as commander. This is what Morph always wanted us, for us. Let's see, do you raise any more kids? No, his wife, Mariah, uh, Mara, Mariah, suffered from a rare disease which made her weak and fragile. She would never she would have never survived pregnancy we've always believed this is the main reason why morpha took us in mariah always hated us and somehow she also hated herself for not being able to give morpha a blood descendant you shouldn't talk of her like this Oop. you know it as well as i do polaris i remember the looks that woman gave us they still give me the chills she did everything she could to make us feel miserable until her very last breath. All right, but I need you to keep a cool head. Hmm. Morpha has put you under my command so that I will make you the captain he expects you to become. And that's what I'm going to do. I understand the feelings you have for Quartz, but you've seen it through your own eyes. The man has betrayed the children of the sun, has tried to kill us. Our mission is to take him down. There's a brief silence until Blaze speaks. You're right, Captain, but we've lost his track. How are we going to find Quartz and his men? Maybe we haven't lost them at all. What do you mean? 
We've managed to place several trackers on the ships that flew away with quartz. As long as they don't locate them, we'll be able to track down their signal wherever they're hiding. Ooh. Blaze follows when she hears this. Browns when she hears this. Maybe it's just an impression, but she doesn't seem pleased at all. Yes, yeah, uh, it sounds like she doesn't want to catch him. Good job, Lieutenant. Get back to your ships. We'll leave immediately. We'll take Quartz and his men by surprise and bring them to Morpha. Both lieutenants render the military salute and leave. Things are getting out of hand. You don't like having to finish with the soldiers who are facing the rest of Norto's troops, but there's no other choice. If you wish to earn the commander's trust, you'll have to obey his orders. And even if Quartz seems likable, one good deed can't erase a whole life of crime. Whether you like it or not, Jaden Quartz has been and will always be a captain of the Children of the Sun. Captain Astra, the signals from the transmitters are reaching us from different locations in the neighboring sectors. I've ordered the communications team to forward you the signal. Copy that, Lieutenant Polaris. We'll follow the traces until we find Quartz <laughs> and his men. May, triangulate position of the enemy ships and set the course. Tracker's signals come from different sectors, Captain. Quartz seems to have scattered his troops. May, mark the targets on the star map. <laughs> Aye, Captain. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thigo. All right. <clears throat> Captain, one of the tracker signals is nearby. Yeah, it looks like he's uh... Copy. Scan the coordinates. On a planet. They stopped in a small town on the southern hemisphere of Solari Prime. Perfect. May, send Polaris and Blaze the course. Okay, so I guess we're going there. Ship's still 100%, so we don't need to go to anywhere else right now. Oop. Let's say how many different spots are there? I think I saw three. Yeah, hangar, and where's the other one? There it is. You and you you and your crew get ready before landing. One of the signals of the trackers attached to Quartz's ship has led you to this planet. Solari Prime. It's more than likely that you will encounter his soldiers soon enough, and you don't want to get caught by surprise. You all access the army and gear up for the mission. The ship's hatch opens and you start moving. Following the ship's trace, the signal has stopped at coordinates which don't match with any known spaceport at Solari Prime. Wherever they've docked, they've taken enough care to avoid being detected, which actually is a good opportunity for you. Trying to hunt them down in the middle of the city would have been much more difficult. Where are we heading? Okay, according to the records, the ship has stopped at a small town away from the city. We've checked the coordinates, and they seem to match the Ilion Colony, Captain. Ilion Colony. What are Quartz's men doing there? It's a small town away from everything. It looks like the right place to go unnoticed. We've got troops scattered in many plants within our sectors. If a fleet of enemy ships would have landed in the capital, all arms would have been set off soon enough. We should try to remain unnoticed then. If Lieutenant Polaris is right, we'll raise too much attention when we get to Ilion Colony. Before leaving the for Ilion Colony, you walk through the city looking for clothes which will help you go help you to go undercover. Together with the three crews, you're a group of at least 20 soldiers wearing Children of the Sun military gear, which makes you pretty noticeable. As you can guess, the combat masks used by Noto soldiers aren't particularly discreet. You regroup once you're ready and the lieutenant draw your attention. In spite of having been traveling together all this time, it's awkward to see their faces unmasked. Lieutenant Polaris looks exactly as you would have pictured him by listening to his voice. A tall man with a cold look, rather intimidating. On the other hand, Jody Blaze was quite the opposite, physically speaking. Having seen her in combat and knowing 
that she's a children of the sun's lieutenant, it would have been hard to tell that she, that beneath the mask there's a beautiful face. She almost seems sweet as long as she's not trying to kill you. As you usually do, you use several terrestrial vehicles to get to your destination. It takes about five or six hours to get all the to get to the Ilion colony. Dawn turns to dusk. It looks like you will be there by the first hours of the night, which will be advantageous for you. Yeah, going in at, yeah, at night makes sense. You finally reach an opening area where you park the vehicles and continue the rest of the journey on foot. This way, it'll be easy to blend in with the local population. Once you leave behind the vehicles, you follow Polaris' instruction until you get close to the colony's outskirts. Here we are, Ilion Colony. Hmm. Um, yeah, let's, let's check our surroundings out. You go deep into the dark streets. Although it's not particularly late, there are hardly any people wandering around, and just a few minutes later, not a single soul can be sent. Oh, that's bad. This is so weird. Even if the early hours of midnight, the empty streets steeped in deep silence make you feel uneasy. Where's everybody? Check out the house lights. They're all out. Oh, it's a trap. Polaris is right. Now you realize that the lights of, the, of all the nearby buildings are out. This can't be a mere coincidence. It has to be a curfew. After wandering for a short while, you find an inn. Although the establishment seems to be closed, just like the rest of the houses, you loudly knock on the door. There's no answer. You try again, knocking harder. You hear a mechanism as the other side. Oh, at the other side of the door, then a small hatch opens. Through it, you can see eyes of a man talking to you from the inside. What are you doing? You scared me to death. We need a place to spend the night. Man looks at you through the slot and seems to notice you're not from here. Travelers to Ilion Colony, boy, you sure are out of luck. All right, come in before they see you. The door opens and you enter. Several people look at you from the corridors, but the innkeeper doesn't give you the chance to speak to anyone. We thought you were children of the sun. Jeez, you shouldn't be wandering the streets at night. If Burke's men had seen you, you'd be dead by now. You, you, you've been lucky to find this inn. Burke? A week ago, a Children of the Sun's fleet commander by the name of Captain Heather Burke came to Ilion Colony. At first, we thought they were searching for someone or something, but that wasn't the case. Since they arrived, they've been plundering and doing with us whatever they want. They dealt with the law enforcement officers and have already locked many of us in the cells of what used to be the police station. So they imposed a curfew. That's right, several men tried to stand up against Captain Burke. After executing him, the captain's troops have taken control of the streets at night. Oh boy. Man walks you to your rooms and leaves. When you're alone, you speak to the lieutenant. Please. Polaris. Is there anything you can tell me about this Burke? She was a soldier under Captain Kane's command. Quartz must have promoted her. Man hasn't mentioned Quartz. That's odd. Jaden isn't the kind of soldier who hides behind his men. Yeah, he's probably not on the planet. It makes sense indeed. After splitting up the squadron, it's very likely that Jaden Quartz is no longer on the planet. Now that you're here, you may try to obtain more information on his whereabouts, or you could pull back and follow the other ship's signals. The lieutenants and their crew look at you impatiently, expecting an answer. Yeah, if he's not d here, why waste our time? All we're going to wind up doing is getting into a fight and losing people, so... It makes sense indeed, although it's very likely that Quartz is no longer on the planet, there's no way to be certain he's with the ships on which Polaris attached the trackers. Now that you've found someone close to Quartz, you must take the occasion to obtain intel from her. What? Okay. The noise in the room wakes you up. You open your eyes and see a gun barrel pointing at your face. It takes you a few seconds to regain consciousness and understand what's going on. You look at both sides and you see your room full of soldiers. Stand up, Captain. Heather Burke wants to speak to you. What's going on? The last thing you remember is going to bed, waiting for tomorrow to continue with the mission. How have they managed to find you? Oh, son of a... Yeah, he, the the this dude turned us in. Come on, baby. Yeah. What? That was a five and a six. What the? F you move your head to avoid the gunshot and unsuccessfully try to grab the gun's barrel. 
man hits you on the face and steps back. Yeah, the rest of the soldiers raise their guns to point at you. There's too many of them. Even if you were armed, you can't face six armed soldiers. Plus, the other unit's probably waiting outside. Yada, yada, yada. Bullshit. Captain Burke and several soldiers cross the door, holding some of your crew members as prisoners. Surrender or we'll kill them, Captain. Yeah. The soldier cuts you, cuffs you, and uncovers your head. You're taken out of the room and downstairs without knowing where you're heading to. Hey, you guys, let me know down in the comments if I'm just reading that wrong. I saw a five and a six. That should have totaled a lot more than seven. Does that mean I need to roll two sevens? Let me know down in the comments because, man, this crap's really starting to piss me off. They do not do a good job of explaining this at all. Devs definitely need to think about that. The last thing you can hear before exiting the building is one of the guards talking to Bane, mate Maddox, the innkeeper. You did well, Maddox. Here you go. You earned it, you son of a... It's been at least two hours since you left the room. The inn. Ben Burke's men drag you to a building and lock you in a room, handcuffing you to a chair, which is bolted to the floor. You haven't seen anything. The soldiers covered your head to make sure you can't spot their location. Testing their strengths, you sit down and wait until you hear the door opening again. You feel someone pulling the pieces of cloth covering your head. You are blind by the light in the room, but you get used to it after a few seconds. That's right, Captain Astra. It's such a big surprise to see you in Elian County. Tell me, how did you find us? The battle at the communication center. I should have known. Smart move. Anyways, your presence in the city is, in fact, good news for me. I'm sorry for having brought you here like this, but I can't afford too many risks, as you might understand. We've locked up your men, Captain. Don't worry about them. They're all fine. If you cooperate, soon you'll all be safe and sound far away from here. I know you're here looking for General Quartz, Captain Astra. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but the General isn't on this planet. My men and I left the Renegade Army a few days ago, and we've been entrenched ourselves here. Renegade Army. That's what they call us. General Quartz has divided the fleet in search of allies all throughout the galaxy. The criminal families in the Titan, the Equilian mercenaries at the fold. We even heard that Quartz is in touch with the Interstellar Republic. He intends to make us the third military force in this conflict. And I can tell you, Captain, that was never the deal. I'm not. I have no interest in fighting along with some dirty Equilian and even less dying for a fool with airs and graces. What do you want? We want to make a deal, Captain. We help you take down Quartz and the Renegade Army, and in exchange, Morphia forgets about us. The Emperor's troops are enough to finish with Quartz and the criminals backing him. Morphia won't allow this. You don't know the commander as well as you think, Captain. The last thing Morphia wants is Imperial Notos finding out what's going on. The only reason why we haven't been hunted down before is because of the commander is foolish enough to believe he can solve the problem by himself. With most the captains in Unit 4 fighting the Republic at the far side of the galaxy, it'll be easy for the Renegade Army to carry out their plan. Quartz and the rest of the captains have set Maiden Abyss as their target. If the Renegade Army blows up the station, the communications between the children's sectors will be seriously damaged, giving Kendra Mason the opportunity to move her troops into the Emperor's territory. Oh, okay. You shake your head. Quartz can't face the defense of Maiden Abyss by himself, Burke. Even, even if a few mercenaries back him, the station will wipe them out before they can even reach the ships defending it. Sure they can. Not only have they got the support of dozens of ships from the criminal organization, but there are soldiers loyal to Quartz already deployed inside Maiden Abyss. They'll sabotage the station's defenses to assure our rival. So what's the offer? The Renegade Army ship's are currently waiting for Quartz at the Ishtar Gate. The General will show up in a couple of days along with several Red Tier ships to join the rest of the troops and prepare the attack. It'll be then when we'll take action. My captains and I will sneak you inside the camp and we'll finish the Quartz and we'll finish with Quartz before he can send his soldiers to Soma II. The captain's death will be a huge blow to the Alliance and we'll avoid the attack on Maiden Abyss. We can both benefit from this deal, Captain Astra, although there's still a pending issue. That's right, Captain Ken Flanagan, second command of the Renegade Army, knows we've abandoned the target Quartz gave us before leaving. 
He's trying to reach us for many days, so by now he must already suspect our betrayal. If we want our plan to work, we'd better find him before he reports to courts or we'll be lost. You know where he is? We don't know where he is. Okay. Captain Flanagan left following court's orders even before we split up. We would have gone after him if we hadn't been for the presence of Quartz and Morpheus troops all throughout the sectors. Right now, we're enemies to both of them. Flanagan is the only loose thread of the plan, Captain Astra. Find him, and I assure you, that will end Quartz. Hmm. I'm glad to see you are a reasonable man, Captain Astra. I'll release your men and you'll leave at once. Come back to Ilian Colony once you've captured him and we'll commence w the operation. We'll meet at the police station in the village downtown. Bert covers your head again and her men come back for you. As she has promised, you're escorted to a safe distance and they finally release you. We shouldn't trust Burke, Captain. She already betrayed the commander and now she'll betray Quartz. What's preventing her from doing the same to us? That's what I was thinking. Captain Burke knows the Children of the Sun will eventually find her if the Renegade Army doesn't kill her first. Morpha's pardon is her best option to stay alive. The Commander isn't the kind of person who would forgive something like that, Captain. He will. You've heard him speaking about Quartz. Finding him is Morpha's biggest ambition right now. If the Captains turn Quartz in, Morpha will agree. Captain Zephyr speaking, transmitting from coordinates 251.420. We've been ambushed by an enemy squadron near King's Fall. Our captain has fallen. We request immediate backup. We won't hold much longer. Damn it, Polaris. Fly back to Nova Magna and inform Commander Morphia. We'll meet at the coordinates. Aye, aye, Cap. Lieutenant Blaze and I will leave at once. All right. Uh, on your own, cap Command Captain. So I'd assume that would be, you know, one of the lines they just haven't put in the game yet. All right, folks. Well, we'll keep it kind of mellow today. And my ship looks cool. Actually, this lighting, that ship looks really cool, too. You coming or are you just gonna stay there? Looks like she's following us. Yeah, let's go hit that station. Real quick, see if they got any goodies, anything we want. I'm looking for a Gatling gun. It's like one of the only weapons I can't, th I don't think I've used yet. But it's far enough away, we'll probably get attacked. Yep. Activate the shield! All hands to battle stations! May the sunlight show away! Seriously, we just called out. I guess we're taking the whole uh, sun thing. I'm serious. Great job, crew. We did it. There we go. Always do my best to try and make sure we get a little bit of combat in the episode here. Let's see, what did we get? Ooh, Mark IV laser cannon, huh? All right, we'll just go out here. All righty, folks, so when we come back... We'll assist Lieutenant Zephyr's squadron ambushed at Baggy High. And we'll see where things go from there. As always, I am the Rev. This is Between the Stars.
Gotta give it to the devs, man. They are some great looking ships in this. Good lighting. Anyways, keep your heads down. Your ships of doom up and I'll see you again real damn soon.